Go ahead and, uh, yeah, thank you. Love it that you read my mind. Well, welcome to the Beyond Fearing Judgment Worldwide International Hangout of Magnitude. I made that up. Um, I'm so glad you guys are here. I just, I just get all squishy inside when I see all your faces on the screen. Um, no sound at all. Can anybody, can everybody wave at me that can hear me? Can everybody, everybody else can hear me? Okay, cool. <laughs> Johanna, Jan, um, just restart your stuff and see if that changes the, the sound. Cool. So for those of you that have never been on Zoom before, you have a little toggle on your right top hand screen that says speaker view or gallery view. If uh, you'd like to see the entire civilization as the Brady Bunch, you can do a uh, gallery view. And if you just want to see my beautiful face or the other faces of the beauties who might be speaking, you can do uh, speaker view. Um, so, so I created this call and this hangout from um, a story, an event that occurred uh, last week that I created in my life, um, having to do with a real estate agent and an apartment. <laughs> and I got a whole shit ton of awareness from it. Um, basically, what occurred was uh, my friend and I live in a new apartment, and I'm echoing. Really. Can we mute everybody to answer the question? And... <laughs> Ashley, can you go ahead and mute everybody so we don't have an echo? And if you haven't. You're muted, Crystal. Okay. okay. How's that? Okay, cool. And we're trying this again. So what happened was, there I was, needing a new apartment. <laughs> uh, Torsten and I had checked all kinds of things on Craigslist. Uh, there was like not a lot available. We found this perfect apartment. Um, this real estate agent was basically dead inside to the world. Like he had no life in his body. He looked at us like, we. Basically, when I called him and said, hey, you mentioned that you had a three-bedroom apartment for rent, um, you know, and we'd be interested in seeing it. And he was like, well, there's already an application in on it, but if you want to show up, there's an open house. You can show up. So I was like, okay, we'll show up. So he had no interest in us or getting this place rented or in life itself. So we show up. There's like five other people milling around this open house, you know, just checking this place out. And um, we are amongst them. And it, places in Vancouver that are down by the water are in high demand. Um, there's a lot of water here, but there's a limited amount of places. So this particular place, the proximity to the water was phenomenal. And even though it was like, it was outdated, there was three levels and tall ceilings and skylights. And it was like, it was great. So we walked in there, both of us, and we were like, oh my God, this place, like we want this place. So... It was so the real estate agent was in the back of the house, like just talking to somebody else and was was bug, you know, just not paying attention. And I basically pulled his energy over to where I was and just looked at him and asked him a few questions about, you know, what it would take to get into this place. And and I said, So how are you making your decision? Like, are you trying to pick the best person? Because there are some real estate agents that wanted to pick the best candidate. He's like, No, first person who gives me a deposit wins. And I was like, ding. So I said, okay, so how do we do that? What is the process? Oh, we need a this, we need a that. And I said, okay, cool. So by when? You know, he's like, well, there's only two more hours in the work day today. So maybe not by today. I was like, oh, two hours. That's tons of time. <laughs> no problem. So basically within two hours, I had like whipped around the city. I'd gotten him the deposit. I'd filled out the application while we were driving. I put in an envelope everything he needed. And we had 45 minutes to spare by the end of the day. So got him everything he needed. Um, and so what happened after that was I was like, so excited that I had used my awareness to like ascertain exactly what this person needed and had asked the correct questions to get the information I needed and I had delivered it like really fast. So I was super excited. So I create this Facebook post about what if your life could be ease. <laughs> And in this Facebook post, I described this real estate agent as Miss. I didn't use his name. Come on, I would never do that. But I described himself so that I, uh, like, Mr., I think I'm going to kill myself on Monday. And uh, Mr., I hope I asphyxiate in the middle of the night. You know, just, just describing the energy that he was being. 
I forgot that Facebook, the way I post, is public. So before he had Googled me and he was just checking out my application and everything, he was texting me and he's like, it looks great. Like, you know, you're in, let's meet on Monday. And then by Monday, I get this text from him that says, I'm sorry, the owners have reviewed your application and it's unacceptable. Just like that, no explanation. So I end up making a video. I'm really upset. You know, I'm like, here's the tool that you use. How does it get better than this? How does it get better than this? How does it get better than this? You know, I'm really up like been crying. And anyway, we end up finding another place. A week later, about three days um, ago, I got a message on Facebook that we're from a, from a non-friend where I have to approve their message to come through. And it was him. He had stewed on this for a week and hadn't said anything to me about it until a week later and had and said um, he parroted a few of the sentences that I used describing him. Funny that he knew it was him. And said, access BS, you're rude, arrogant, and no wonder you didn't get the kits rental, kits alano rental. And so I I came, I I just I, the first thing that occurred when I saw this message was like, holy shit, kind of like my worst fear realized. Like one, I'd never would have said anything if I thought that it was going to hurt him. Two, I forgot that it was public. And so it brought up all this stuff for me of um, feeling, wanting, tempted to feel bad, uh, like I should feel bad, like all of this, you know, stuff. Like it's almost like you, you finally like did that thing that got you judged more than anything. Although I know that I'm probably going to get more judgment than that, but it was like, and it seemed sort of justified because I wasn't actually being the nice girl, you know? So I went back and forth with him for a bit and, and, and basically he wanted to know why I did this. And so I, I tried to be logical. And then I realized that from his point of view, it was just a, a wash. And I just basically said whatever I needed to say to, to end the situation. But when I posted that in the 30 day video challenge and Stephanie messaged me, she asked, she, um, I asked a question, which she said, here, I'll private message you. And we ended up having a five minute little facilitation over Facebook. And one of the things she asked me, she said, it was this, she said, is offense um, a defensive or an offensive energy? I'd never been asked that question before. My mom has been offended by me my whole life, offended by the things I would say, offended by the things I wouldn't do. Like offense was the one energy in, in my life between her and I particularly and my siblings that created so much trauma and drama in our family. So offense for me was like this, it was, it, I had interpreted it as a defensive energy, like I had done something wrong and therefore they were offended. So when she asked me this question, I was like, so is offense an, offense, an offensive or a defensive energy? And I was like, wow, I'm getting that it's an offensive energy. She said, yes. And that's when this started really unraveling for me in a different way. Because beyond fearing judgment, when it comes to like putting out videos or getting more seen or whatever, we're, a lot of us are playing with that already. You know, like we're playing with, the, so a lot of us are playing with the 30 day video challenge. Some of us are playing with, you know, being seen more on Facebook or, and, and if you're not, what could you choose that would allow you to play with that even more? But this took it like to a totally different level for me because the, now it's like, now I'm okay with like receiving judgment for being silly on video. Okay, whatever. I'm silly. But somebody getting offended about something I say was a whole different thing for me. And so when I realized that it was an offensive energy, I was like, okay, so how much of my life am I avoiding offense, hurt, um, and victimization or being the perpetrator of victim on somebody. How much of what I'm not saying or not willing to be is to avoid that in somebody's life. And I was like, wow, it's everywhere. I'm avoiding that still everywhere. Less visibly than I was doing it as a kid because as a kid I didn't I just didn't want to be seen. I didn't talk, don't hear me, don't look at me, no nothing. So now that's different. But still with what I'm choosing, it's like I'm still letting that control me. So that's what I want to open this conversation up to is like how 
and I don't, we have a call tomorrow. So if you want more of this, come on the call tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to do the call before the call, but fuck it. So what, where are you stopping yourself from being all of you? Because somewhere you've bought that if you hurt somebody or that you can hurt somebody, that you can offend somebody and that you can victimize somebody with something that you choose or say. So everything that is, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all names, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Offense and hurt and choosing to be and victim are all choices people make. And how much are they choosing that to control you? So everywhere you've bought into that, can we just strain and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all names, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Then Karina said, oh my God, I do that everywhere. Yeah, I know. So... So this whole topic is like as broad as we want to make it. Like I, that's, that's the piece for me that was, was this major aha. But I really do want to open up this conversation to like, where are you guys stopping yourself from being you because you're fearing judgment? And what can we open up and shift and unlock to change that? And anybody's welcome to jump in at any time. And Evie and Rachel and all of you guys that co-created this with me, if you want to jump in with where you're at with this or what you want to contribute, Shana, like anything and everything is welcome. So I'm going to just sort of open it up right now everywhere. Yeah, everybody. So oh my God. If, if I can add something to what yeah. you were just saying right now, and it has been changing already that, that uh, I used to have this big thing where I always had to be nice. Yes. I always had to be found nice and I couldn't, uh, hurt anyone or do anything wrong um, and I would always find and look for the wrongness when I was doing somebody wrong yeah and they're still like you're very clear on what it all is with the energy and for me it's sort of how does it get any better than this um, it's not that clear quite yet um, yeah well but yeah can, yeah well can I say something to that because I when I was in this last um, choice of possibilities with Gary and I've heard him say this before, but it's always you get it when you get it. So just bear with yourself. If that's, a, if that's you too. Um, but, you know, he was saying to me around a certain topic, he said, well, how much are you trying to be the nice girl? And I was like, everywhere. <laughs> He's like, well, being a bulldozer. And I was like, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm a bulldozer. I don't really want to admit that. And so, of course, the clearing that he gave me, and this is where I want to talk to you guys that might not have heard this logic before, the clearing that he gave me was what energy, space, and consciousness can me and my body be to be the bulldozer I truly be. So, because the thing is, like, when you're trying to be the nice person while actually being something else, you're, you, you are in this conflictual universe that you can't, you have no choice in. So Evie, <laughs> this so because I'm the thing is what I'm sort of getting more that I am I am a freaking bulldozer, and yeah. I sort of get that one of the things that just popped in my brain is how many times that I stopped myself from people because I was too intense in every possible way. I was intense in making love. I was we had intense another bulldozer. In my words. So you know. So uh, <laughs> bulldozer are in the room and she's just like laughing her ass off at everything you're saying. Um, yeah. So too intense. And it's not working for me anymore. So I'm definitely already choosing something different. So cool. Yeah. Cool. And this is something for all of, I mean, so, I mean, as humanoid beings, we care. We want to create a different planet. There's all of this magic we perceive you know, like all of that's true for all of us in very different ways. We all have it. We all have that malady differently, right? We've got this, this virus in our system of like wanting a different planet, you know? And so, but we've decided that the way to create that is by dot, dot, being nice, being what we've decided kind is, um, being whatever the fuck it is we decided that was, which doesn't actually give us access to every single energy that could create what it is we'd like to have, right? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> everything that is, times a godzillion. Can we destroy and create all that? 
Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, fuck, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So what these energy, space, and consciousness clearings do, when, when there's an energy, you are being while avoiding being it. What you want to do is get yourself into allowance of what you're already being, which is a total bulldozer. Okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> so what energy space and consciousness can you and your bodies be to be the bulldozers of magnitude that you truly be and everything that is will you destroy it and create all that <sighs> right wrong good bad pod pod all night shirts boys and beyonds cool so what is a bulldozer i mean like so how many judgments do you guys have of what you should be and what you shouldn't be Maybe just a couple fucking godzillion of those. It's like what I should be to create what I want on the planet is love and light and space and kindness and all of these beautiful rainbow things that have unicorns and ponies tracing out of my ass, right? Does that actually create what you want or does that get you run over like a slug? And what I did with this real estate agent was I, I – I went to being apologetic just to, to end it. But what I was aware of in my universe is that if he took it one step farther, I was going to kill him. <laughs> and I was so grateful for that awareness because after I realized that offense is a control mechanism, I looked at, I looked at, he looked at his, looked at his world. Oh, this is what he does. He actually goes through the world and tromps on whoever gets in his way and doesn't care about them. That's how he functions. That's what I was addressing. That was one of the energies I was correct about. So there was what it was going to take to change the situation. And then there was what I was willing to be should it go any further. So where are you cutting off what you're willing to be because you've decided that you have to be something else? And everything that is, we destroy it and create it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, fuck, all night, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And truth, this is where we cut off all of our potency, all of our... This is where we cut off ourselves right here is when we've decided we have to be a certain way to be in the world, right? So what potency are you refusing with the nice girl and boy you're choosing? And everything that is we destroy it and create all that. <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pod, puck, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. This is not what I thought this hangout was going to be about. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody else have questions or thoughts or uh, musings on this topic? I've got some awareness that came up <laughs> as you were talking, surprisingly. <laughs> I just suddenly, you, when you were talking, I thought, oh, when people do that to me to try and control me, it's not my fault. All those years, I kind of thought that there was something that I'd done wrong. Yes. <laughs> and it was my fault somehow, and therefore I should be the one that made it better. Um, yes. And then trying to make something better that other people don't want to be better. It's a bit of a futile exercise, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just... they've, they've created this situation where they've now controlled you and now you're trying to fix it so that they can't control you anymore, but you've missed the whole point. <laughs> yeah, cool. How does it get better than that? <laughs> better than that. What else can we choose now? Yeah, awesome. I love yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah. Jackie, did you have something? Jackie McLean disappeared. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Questions? Thoughts? Yes. Crystal? Hello. Yes. Hello. <laughs> I'm always wondering where can I be the bulldozer and where do I be the energy that people can hear and perceive? You know right. I mean? So are you are you trying to conclude which which goes which when how how mhm mm <laughs> cute <laughs> understandable and cute yeah like insane because it doesn't work that way because it's like no. you've got to be in that moment going okay what's required here to create what i desire <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, because there's blah, 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 blah. there's a lot of point of view in my world that um you know, there are a couple of people I can say fuck you to, like, oh, just fuck you. But 
for for a lot of megaton other people i would ju I just like to be nice because i see potency i see potency everywhere fuck it so that's right so, you know so how much have, so it's like we see this potential in people we see yeah. so how many beautiful people when you look at people i mean i get annoyed by people too so let's putting that aside <laughs> I know that we all have our moments where people are can suck and go die and we'd rather be on the planet alone. And how many of you see beautiful people yeah. when you look at people? Right. So the tendency when you can see beautiful people is to want to draw that out more and to go, but why are you choosing that? But uh, don't you know who you are? Like don't, and that's actually not kind, no. which is not what we're told. Like we're told that, inspiring somebody's greatness or trying to seeing it and going but you could be is kind but what that does is that doesn't actually acknowledge the choices that they're making that are working for them so if you have for example someone who's victimizing or putting out that his life is crap or whatever would it be kind to say oh just go fucking victimize yourself <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what would be allowance what would change if you were just an allowance of what people were choosing yeah oh i'm just way too impatient for that crap. but where have you decided and i'm sure you're the only one um, oh, no. that, I know, that helping people is actually helping yeah but i've i've, I've I'm, I'm, it's more helping me but i'm not getting there fuck it <laughs> But what do you mean by that? Um, ah, that's where I go. I said I wanted. I was about to say trying to create everything I desire, but trying isn't anything, right? Right. Okay. So, what does it take to create a life and a living that works for you without changing anybody else? Mm. It's just stepping into being all of me and being the bulldozer, I guess. Yeah. And just being that energy of like, no, this doesn't work for me. You know, I'm going to, you don't have to change a thing. Just what you're being right now doesn't work for me. And it's not, a, it's not, it doesn't make them wrong and it doesn't make you wrong. It's just like, pfft. I tried on a five shirts and those four didn't fit and this one did. They're all fine. They're going to fit somebody. Yeah. Okay. So what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to be in total allowance of you with total ease? Thank you. You're whatever. Um, everything, I can't talk. Right, wrong, good, bad, 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 bad. I'm sure it's poison and beyond. Yeah. The, I've noticed this. The more, uh, the more allowance that I have and develop and choose over time and over these classes and doing a bunch of clearings, the more allowance I have for me, the more allowance I have for everyone else. So where are you not in allowance of yourself that you could choose more allowance that would create a different set of choices for you? And by set, I mean infinite, you know, like where, where is that? So when you are looking for somebody to change, what are you not in allowance of in you? And everything that is times a godzillion. You just try to create all that. Everything I could find on health insurance, boys and beyonds. Like, if it's not okay with you that somebody's like OCD neurotic, if that bugs you, where are you not in allowance of your own OCD neuroses? <laughs> right? If, if, etc. Like, you can just extrapolate that out into anything and everything that you find you don't have allowance for. What have you decided is not okay in you? that therefore everybody else can't have, that if you were in allowance of with you, would change that. Everything okay. that is time for resilient, right? Wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all night, choice, boys, and Can you repeat that? I couldn't hear it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just where are you not in allowance of you, of whatever that thing is in you, that if you could be in allowance of that would give you the allowance for everyone else with total ease. Where have you decided that you have this problem and therefore you need to fix it, but you can't fix it, but you have to fix it, but you can't fix it. And if they have the same problem, they have to change too. <laughs> so everything you've decided, concluded, um, judged, projected and expected about the quote unquote problems that you have that you can no longer tolerate in somebody else. So you just try and create all that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, wrong, good, bad, fuck, fuck, all night, shirts, poison, yeah. 
Cool. Anyone okay, else? Are we good? I have a thing. Yes, do it. Go. Um, I'm becoming aware, I guess. Or I like to keep people happy and liking me and things. But as I'm choosing lots of exciting new things, and I think allowing that of me, I'm upsetting more people. Oh. There's more judgment it feels like so that's a bit tricky really because all of a sudden they're not happy with me and if I keep choosing these things that are so exciting and who knows it's a bit um, the whole world might hate you yeah the whole thing (laughs) 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 yeah everybody everybody including everybody on this call for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terribly hating you for being so fucking brilliant. <laughs> Stop it. What will I do? <laughs> I think you should stop right now because like, oh. it's, it's brutal how brilliant you are. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing you guys like you very likely not always I'm not going to say this is a blanket thing many many times when you start stepping out into being your brilliance the people closest to you many times or the ones that say they're closest to you will judge you within an inch of your life but do you know why you picked your family because they can't stop your ass And what did you choose for friends that are creating something different for you that you can now choose beyond? And who or what can you add to your life that will actually have your back and celebrate you when you are being as brilliant as you can be? So when I was first starting life (laughs) as a more conscious being and definitely in access, I was surrounded by quote unquote good people, but people that needed me to be slower than I am and they needed me to be smaller than I was choosing to be and they needed they needed all kinds of things. I was still trying to give them that really I wasn't willing to be anymore. And so who or what have you been unwilling to lose that if you were willing to lose them would create total choice? Everything <laughs> that is times a gunsling where you just trying to create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So I lost people. And, and initially, there was this sadness about losing people. And then I realized, wait, I haven't, there, now there's this big space created where I lost people. What did I want to ask for? I was like, you mean you can ask for awesome people? Like, that was like this really bizarre, you can ask for stuff like that? You don't have to just survive what's put in your lap that I forgot that I created? Like, you, know, you, don't, you don't have to survive your former choices. You can actually have what it is you would like to have. So I started asking for people that had my back. That, and, and, and I have droves now. It's, and I, it's, I say droves. And everybody has different levels of having my back. You know, I don't call just anybody for just anything, but I have people, like lots of people. I was, I was in the ESB in Vancouver and I was looking around this room and I was, had a question about my mother that needed to come out and I knew there was story there and I was resisting the story while needing to tell the story. It was a shit show. 30 minutes later, Dane finally got to facilitate me, but um, I was looking around the room before I asked that question and I realized how fucking rich my life was like rich with people and energies and like just beauty beyond anything I could have even imagined. So what would it take for you to be able to receive more than you ever thought was possible? And everywhere you've been trying to hold on to the shit for fear of never getting better shit, you just strain and create all that. <laughs> I could have on fuck on the insurance place and beyond. What if it doesn't even have to be shit? And so, and so this is as you guys create your life, like these, the stuff will come up. It's like, oh, these people might leave me. Yeah, they might leave you. That's their choice. This might happen. Sure, might. 
What do you want to choose? What kind of life do you want to have? What would you like to have as your life? Do you want to let your life be controlled by every Tom, Dick, and Harry without... I can just go... Mm -hmm. I can just take that down. Can I a question, please? Yes. Um, you mentioned about the people who have your back. And um, what, what it brought up to, to me that um, it's sort of like those who never allow you to be less than you are, which means that you always have to try for some kind of betterment or, you know, like jump up to some level. Um, so, which kind of, I'm not sure that if I understand it correctly, but it's not something, I would rather go without people maybe, because it's kind of too stressing, you know, you have to like show up always, but sometimes you want to be small, this is what you are. Cool. Sometimes. How much allowance can you have for you? Sorry? How much allowance can you have for you with what you want to choose? I think that everything that I'm creating, well, it is kind of whether I want it or not, <laughs> some kind of allowance. And then there is this idea of allowance. Um, so what's your question? About the people who have your back, how does it look like for you? Well, it never looks the same way. So one of the questions you can begin to ask is, what would it be like to have people that have my back? How does it look like is looking for the conclusion? So how many of you are looking for the perfect conclusion to rule your life? Well, what do you mean, Crystal? Well, how many decisions, judgments, computations, and conclusions are you looking for to create the perfect life? Everything that is for anybody on the call, we just join and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shirts, boys and beyond. So what would it be like to have people that had your back? There's a lot of this, when you start to get into creating your life, there's a lot of this that you don't have any cognitive idea about. Like if you've grown up, we've all grown up with our history, right? We all have a story or 5,000 of them. You know, we all have a history. My history was that I was in an ingrown little family. We were very religious. We wore long dresses and had long hair. I played music all the time. Like, um, didn't eat meat, had sexual abuse, emotional abuse, like my parents argued all the time. I was in and out of court when I was 13. Um, like I, I didn't have an easy road, you know, I didn't have the picture perfect childhood. So I got into adulthood and I got married once and then had an affair and then I got married again and had way more affairs. Um, and then I got unmarried because I'm like, what am I doing? If I'm going to have affairs, I might as well have them as a single person. And then I had many more I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. But what I'm talking about is that we all have a story. We all have a history. So a lot of this, as we're getting into and using these tools and clearing out space for stuff, don't have a sense of what it would be like to have people that have our back. We have not created that in our life previous to access. So that is what begins to unfold as you ask that question of what would it be like to have people that have my back? It's coming from that place of, I don't know, truly. Yeah, have, it also feels like, you know, you're back against the wall, sort of like something pushing. This is what, yeah, this is what feels like, it feels like. And this is why I probably would personally resist it. They don't want somebody pushing me all the time <laughs> from behind. Cool. And my question to you would be, is that a question or is that a conclusion? There is no, 
No, there is no question in it definitely. Yeah. Yeah, cool. It's just something to look at. As you hear yourself saying things like that, go, wow, is that actually true or is that a conclusion I've come to based on something, right? So everything that is, all the conclusions that you guys have, creating the impossibility of what you could ask for and choose. Will you destroy and uncreate that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all introits, boys and young. So what questions could you add to your life that would create more possibility for you. I wonder. And if you guys want to bring your, your big stuck places into the call tomorrow, we can get right into those. <laughs> I've got some really fun clearings that'll create a lot more space. <laughs> so if you want to come play tomorrow, we'll, uh, you can bring your questions, bring your stuck places and we'll like, We'll dive into the deep end and see what we can change. Cool. Um, the call tomorrow, what time? That is a good question. What time is the call tomorrow? Oh my God, I have to look at my calendar. It's uh, at noon, so that'll be um, 9 o'clock UK time, 10 o'clock European time. Eight. I think it's 8 o'clock UK. 8 o'clock, thank you. I don't know. 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, respectively, if you're in Europe. If you're in uh, Vancouver or Seattle, it's 12 o'clock. And if you're in Colorado, it's 1 o'clock. Ask me how I got so good at this. I don't know. This is a total accident. All right. Cool. So anybody else have anything uh, on this topic? I have a question, Crystal. Cool. Uh, it's Hope. Uh, the kind of thing that was popping for me at the beginning when you were talking about a lot of this was the word alienation. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that since I've been doing more access work, um, that's been kind of popping for me more and more. And I, I, I'll, like, remember to ask the questions around it. But when I don't, that's a really big fear of mine is that I'm going to actually alienate people. Hello. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm nannying a kid right now who's a stormtrooper. <laughs> I was like, who didn't mute themselves? <laughs> cool. So what's, um, so it's the, so what's the fear of being alienated or alienating? Alienating other people. Um, and I've, I've had a tendency to be like, I know all the questions now and then try and share those. But um, How's that working? Not very well, because I generally don't have all the answers. <laughs> not even the questions are the answers? Or, um, I misphrased that. What I meant to say was that I, I sometimes go into a space of being like, I have all the answers now, and, and that's not... I've never done that. I only abused every single person in my path for at least the first six months after I became a certified facilitator. I'm certain I left bruises with the tools. I, you know, I feel really bad. I really feel like I should send apology notes. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I, I didn't ask if you wanted facilitation. I just beat you with it. I apologize. So, um, and there's something too about just being, I feel like if I'm really big, I'm going to alienate people sometimes. Um, so what's the question? What? I guess like what is a question that I can ask to kind of like sense whether or not I'm actually being the energy of alienation or if I'm being the energy of something else is maybe one. What energy, space, and consciousness can make my body be to be as alienating as I truly be? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy it and create it? Yeah. Right, run good bed, pod, pod, online, shirts, boys and beyonds. So listen, guys, everything is the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be, and everything's the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. And so that thing that you're resisting that you don't want to be is that thing you need to choose to be to enable to, to give you total choice to choose something different. So if you find yourself resisting being something, go jump into it with both feet. Be the energy, space, and consciousness of being a total asshole with total ease. Jump into it with both feet. Because when you resist it, you have no choice. I can't be it, but I am it, but I can't be it, but I am it, but I can't be it, but I am it. Pock and pod yourself. What energy, space, and consciousness can my body and I be to be as alienating, an alienating asshole with total ease? Everything that doesn't allow that, right? Run good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys, beyonds. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> is that kind of similar to the bulldozer energy in a way or yeah they're all different you know like when gary talked about once gary ding whatever talked about the infinite energies of the infinite possibilities the infinite colors of the infinite energies of the infinite possibilities right there are as many shades of as many colors as you could possibly imagine and beyond 
So what we tend to do is we limit ourselves to like one or two of those colors. We're like I can be nice and I can be not a little bit less nice. Like <laughs> when I have to be, when somebody's taken my parking spot and I really wanted it. And then we, but we've got this whole spectrum of color available to us if we're willing to have it. And all of these are just colors to create with. The problem is we've created all these judgments about all these different colors. We've created them, we've bought into them, we've been aware of them, we bought into them, we've been aware of them, we've bought into them. I give you a really kind of extreme example from my own life. So my, my dad sexually abused me. And when my mom found out when I was 13, she went on a mission to make my life better by way of the court system. So she involved in the United States, it's social services. She involved the social services and she called the police. And so I was in and out of court and therapist's office for years, at least till I was 18. And, um, and her point of view about sexual abuse was that I had been abused, perpetrated upon, victimized. And so now I was a survivor. And all of this was, and I bought into all of it because I didn't have any other information and I just went with it. And that was everybody's points of view. That was social services points of view. That was the court system's point of view. Like that is the point of view. The functional point of view in this reality is when you are sexually abused, you are a victim. It was not your fault. And this guy over here, whoever did it, is the perpetrator. That created a lot of drama for me. And I had a lot of years, a lot of years of therapy and a lot of years of crying and journaling and like uh, lots of stuff. When I finally got to access consciousness and I went to an ESB class, I can't recount the conversation exactly, but it's centered around me actually having the choice to enter into this family with full knowledge of what was going to go on for me. And when I was asked that question, I got a yes that I had chosen this family. And I yes, it was surprised me that I got a yes. And my whole world lightened. And I was like, I realized in that moment, and I've continually realized it more over the, over the years, that I actually had no judgment about what my dad did. None. None. It wasn't mine. I didn't feel like a victim. It was just what, what, it was, just what was going on. I didn't feel, and, and there were parts of my childhood that I was out of my body, and that's a whole other class. For the, <laughs> but like, I didn't, I didn't have a point of view about it. In fact, my body enjoyed the attention, which I also didn't have a point of view about. And there's no judgment about, actually. So how many different energies have you judged as wrong and bad and unavailable to you that you now can't have access to you because you're so busy deciding that it's wrong? So everything you've decided, judged, concluded, and computed as wrong about you, that if you were just willing to be it, we'd give you choice. we destroy and create all that. Right, wrong, bad, clock, clock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And you know what that shit created for me? Like, I have, so, there is nothing you can tell me that I have judgment about. You can talk to me about sexual abuse, physical abuse, Satanet, Satanistic rituals, abortion, um, adultery, marriage, not marriage, polyamory. Bring it. What do you got? I have no judgment for you. Because I don't, it's not how who I am it's not how I function I'm so grateful for my life so what are you resisting being that if you would choose to be it would give you total freedom everything that is we just try and create it right run goodbye pop pop online shirts with me it is fucking hot in here who turned up the heat <laughs> So, yeah, so does that help? Does that give more clarity? Does that bring up more questions? And you know what? Sorry, I didn't give you a chance to answer. That, my, that state, my, my choice or my awareness of how I actually function, that I have no judgment about that, is judgeable by my family. I'm judged as shutting off my feelings, as not being real, 
as being unhealthy. If they knew about my sex life, they judge me as slutty. I mean, like, if you look at what I'm choosing, it's judgeable in this reality, what I'm being. Who cares? Where are you making that vital to you so much that you would cut off yourself to do it? And everything that is, will you destroy and create that? Very wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Well, hey, Jackie, there you are. So what this brings up is an energy of excitement because uh, I was always known to be the perfect person and I had an affair with a married man. He was my boss about mm -hmm. five years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I enjoyed the attention. I think mm -hmm. I was 20 or 21 at the time and he was 25, 26. Sorry, honey, you're cutting out. We can't hear you, or at least I can't hear you. Uh, there you are again. It just was cutting out. So you had, we had last yet, you had an affair with a married man. Interesting, that's where it cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more. Uh, well, it, it just brought up the excitement, and this happened 25 years ago, which is mm -hmm. now it's still in my body, obviously. And so what it's brought up was the attention mm -hmm. that I got, and of course, people in the office knew about it, so there was that gossip, which is the judgment. And, mm -hmm. But my body really enjoyed it because I was young and sexy and hot, and my body must have thrived on it, but I had to shut it down and hide and... So thanks for sharing because yeah. I can go have another affair now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where you guys, like if there was no judgment and it was just total choice, what questions could you ask to choose the things that are going to make your life greater? Like if I choose this, will it make my life greater? If I choose this, will it create more? Sometimes choosing those things create less and sometimes it creates more. So what if you were willing to function from question rather than the conclusion that you're wrong? What would change in your life? What would change about your choices? So thank you. Erin, did you have a question? Go, girl. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. So you t mentioned the one, two choice reality, which I've been noticing a lot. Like, what are my options in all this space? And I tend to think very few when there are infinite. So my refusal to not judge is like, well, then I need to judge. But I, when I go into the energy of that, it's like, it's so overwhelming because I'm guessing it would be just the energy of being in question and being in awareness. But it's, it's like that potency of not judging is almost like flattening. If that, does that make sense? I mean, my question is, can you say more about when judgment is like, because the truth is my energy is judging or, or already choosing those energies, which is why my life kind of creates itself the way it is. But there's a refusal to judge out of my mouth. And I'm guessing it's actually not even judgment. Right. It would be. Right. So how many of you judge what comes out of your mouth if it's negative as judgment? Yeah. So everything that bullshit is, can we destroy and create it? And then I'll say more, right? Wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all night, shirts, boys and beyonds. So first of all, you have to judge that it's negative to judge yourself for it being negative. Second of all, is it negative or is it an acknowledgement of what is? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things we talk about in foundation, for those of you who haven't taken foundation, this is coming, get excited, is a concept that we call cunt cow faggot bitch. Okay. CCFB for short, because sometimes it takes a while for that to roll off your tongue. So that is when you are in the presence of somebody who is choosing to be a cunt cow faggot bitch, that'll lighten your space, you'll feel better. Um, and what's light for you is true for you, by the way. What's light for you is true for you. And what's heavy for you is a lie. So when you say that and it gets lighter, is it true? So what that is, is that acknowledges what is. Sure, is there an infinite being in there somewhere who could function differently? Yes. Are they choosing that? No. This is how they're functioning. This is what they're choosing to be, and it's simply acknowledging what it is. 
So how much do you acknowledge what it is while making yourself wrong for acknowledging what it is so that you can judge yourself so that you can stay in the eternal wrongness of you for all eternity? Everything that is times a godzillion, we need to destroy and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, only in shorts, boys and dunes. So did that address it? Was there more there? Um, I just, like, I guess you just start. You just go into the world and you just start experimenting and letting things come out of your mouth. It's, it's so terrifying. <laughs> Right. So what do you terrify? So is it terrifying or is it fucking exciting? <laughs> I think it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you will have things that come out. Like when I, like that, that uh, Facebook post was a great example of something that came out of my mouth that I wasn't sorry about at the time where when that person discovered it, I felt like I should be sorry and should appall and backpedal and like, you know, and that's when I had a chance to look at all this and I'm like, was it true? Yes. Was it an acknowledgement? Yes. Was it dead on the money? Yes. Did he find it? Yes. Okay, cool. Now what can we choose? Yeah. Yeah. Did it destroy him? No. Was he trying to use that as a way of destroying me? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So Thank nobody, you. yeah, no, you're welcome. Nobody died. Nobody got maimed. In fact, somebody got acknowledged and somebody got a choice to choose something different. Yeah. And what he chose was that. <laughs> cool. So what if you being willing to be all of you is the invitation to you, to the rest of the world, to choose something different if they want? Like if something comes out of your mouth and it creates something in somebody else's world, which it will if you're willing to be all of you, do you what do you think Gary does in classes for fuck's sakes? And he brings up as much judgment as he possibly can with the things he says. He is no holds barred. That's brilliant. Because if somebody's going to judge what he's saying and separate, they're going to do it faster. <laughs> and if they're not, they're going to ask a question about it. So what imposing presence of awareness and consciousness can you be in the world for everybody to have a chance at a different choice? And everywhere you've been shutting yourself down, stopping yourself, cutting yourself off from you so that you never can be that brilliant. Will you destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, sure it's poison, Can I ask a question, Crystal? Yes. Yeah. So you're being that potent? Yeah. Do you wonder whether the other person can receive it or, do you just being, or are you just being the bulldozer? Well... When you are being, so, so here's, a, here's something to look at. So can you be an imposing presence without saying a word? In, Hell yes. <laughs> can you be a bulldozer without saying a word? Uh -huh. So what words are required in that 10 um, seconds? Thank you. You're welcome. And if you're text messaging? <laughs> Can you be an imposing presence without saying a word? <laughs> yeah. I'll, do, I'll just type dot, dot, dot. <laughs> like, there's a lot of emoticons on that phone. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Um, Hope, did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> I realized after earlier when I was like, I think I have all the questions. And then I was like, no, no, I meant all the answers, but it actually is like, I, I've, I'll ask questions that are actually statements with question marks at the end of them. And it, um, it's something that, so yeah, I'm, I'm at, I was like, Oh, that's funny. You're that the I, only one that ever does that. But I'm wondering like, I, I've, so aside from like actually alienating and pissing off people around me and some people who are really close to me, um, and then, like, I feel like I'm also creating a separation between, like, myself and them and access. And So are you, so here, I'm going to pause you for a second. So are you creating a separation or are you aware of what they're choosing? Aware of what they're choosing. Yeah. People will choose to separate from you. I chose to separate from Gary. I, I had this whole thing I, at the COP in Seattle. I was having an issue for three full days. I had an issue. And I, I talked to one of my, Carlina, about it. And I'm like, Carlina. 
I don't even talk to Gary and I'm separating from him. Like, I don't want him to, I don't think he likes me. I don't think he approves of me. I'm like, I've got so much insanity going on here. And so I finally asked about it at the end of the, the three days and I still haven't listened to it, which is funny. But what changed was I chose something different. So people will separate from you. That's what people do. They have to, they, they project, they expect, and then judge, reject, and separate. Pez Juniors. Pro projections and expectations create separation, judgment, and rejection. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting that I've, I've just created the like, if I'm alienating, then they will separate or then they won't like access or then instead of like, I'm awesome making question. <laughs> so decisions, judgments, computations, and conclusions, creating that way you destroy and create all that. Yes. Right, good red pod, pod, online shorts, boys, and young. Is, is there a way like, to catch the energy or I guess I just like I don't even know how to catch then like because even for myself I'm noticing that well if, if I'm asking if I have a conclusion before I'm asking the question even about like what will my life be like in five years you know those questions that are just about choice then I'm swaying it and so how how do I get into a space where I'm just asking from the space of a question I pock and pod my decisions judgments computations and conclusions a lot so, and, and my projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. So DJCC, P, Pez Jr. are the two acronyms. I pock and pod those a lot of times before I begin asking questions. And when I find myself head tripping, like trying to figure stuff out instead of asking questions and getting awareness, I'm like, woo, all the decisions, judgments, computations, and conclusions, creating this mess up here, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, all the insurance, boys and beyonds. And then I'll do a bunch of fives. So this is, again, if you haven't taken foundation, um, ask me about it. But one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, to interrupt our tendency to compute. Because that's what we're taught to do. We're taught to use our mind to figure out our life. How is that working for you? Is that creating the life you want to have? So, yeah. yeah. I'm noticing I'm actually trying to compute how to turn that into a way to feel an energy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I would actually spend the next 24 days, hope, just doing fives. Like, don't talk. Just walk around, do fives. See what changes in your life. <laughs> if anybody asks you what you're doing, just go. Start dancing. Yeah, just make it into a thing. Eat a pickle while you're, I don't even know where that came from, the pickle. I've got something to add. Cool. I've just been noticing, actually, how after doing the right voice with Blossom last year and about the judgment stuff, how as I have less judgment, it's really changed a lot of things. So I had this thing with my mom and I always wanted to do the right thing. And um, it was interesting really, because when I was willing to give her the freedom to make her choices, it didn't impact me in the same way. So she rang me this week and she said, I was going away and she said, it's your mother. Have you forgotten who I am? Are you going to think me before you go away? And I just laughed at her and she's like, what are you laughing at? And I just like, was, there was no buttons anymore to, to push. And it was awesome really because I'm from a place of not, not, not honestly caring whether she judged me or not, which before I would have been like, Oh, I'm a bad girl. I mm -hmm. kind of just went, well, I'm not leaving the planet, Mom. I'm going to have my mobile. <laughs> awesome. I honestly didn't have a point of view. And, like, there was just nothing for her to push. Yeah. And it was awesome because it changed so quickly because I didn't have a judgment of me about what I should have been doing. And, like, I really get that it's not necessarily the judgments from her it's the judgments that I decided that she gave me that I was then putting onto myself that um that were sticking me because once I didn't have them about me anymore she couldn't push them at me nailed it awesome how does it yeah go? it was cool that is cool. And the more you guys are, more we're able to get out of judgment of ourselves, the less people are able to judge us. Like it just doesn't stick. It's like water off a duck's back. It's like, oh, there was water there. Doesn't matter. Right? Cool. Well, 
we're out of time. So if you guys want more of this, we're going to do it tomorrow for 50 bucks. One call, 90 minute call. We're going to go deep dive into more of this um, and wherever else it goes. It'll be a total adventure. So thank you so much for showing up today, you guys. Seriously, this was so awesome. And I'm so grateful. So and if you want to play, there's going to be PayPal links everywhere. I don't think you'll be able to miss it. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. Uh, you want to unmute everybody? And we'll just like have a big Thank you. Thank you, Krista. Thank you. 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 Thank you.